If you have or are considering purchasing the Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet, the stock push-pull spinner included with the cabinet actually isn't too shabby. It's dialed in pretty well, it plays pretty well, and it also looks pretty good mounted on this control panel. In fact, I think it's of better quality than the flight stick itself, but there's always opportunities for improvement for those who want to try and get a better experience. In this case, we have Glenn's Retro Show and Thunder Sticks, the GRS TS.02 version 2 push-pull spinner. Keep in mind, if you're going to put this in an Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet, you have to pick up version 2. If you have version 1, which he sold previously, well, that version is not compatible with the Tron cabinet, whereas this version is. Inside of the box are a whole bunch of goodies, and we're not going to need everything to get this up and running with our Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet, since it does come with all these extra parts if you were going to put it in your own DIY Multi-K type build. Inside of the package, you saw that black metal spinner topper, as well as here is our metal spinner itself. Everything's made of quality parts. The push-pull function feels nice and tight versus the Arcade 1UP, which feels a little bit loosey-goosey, and you wonder if that's going to stand the test of time. Multiple ports on the bottom, which I'll show you how to get everything set up. No worries. Obviously, this is just going to go right on top, and you use the included hex bolt to tighten it down. There's a couple of additional action buttons for your DIY multi-cades included in the box. We're not going to need these for the Tron cabinet. But we are going to need this USB adapter board in order to plug the spinner into our PC to configure it, as well as then to finally connect it to the Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet. Also inside the box, we have a bag of wires here, but we're not going to need all of them. Out of the three cables, we're only going to need two of them. There's our little hex bolt for tightening the topper onto the spinner, which will be one of our final steps. It just goes in and you turn it to the right to tighten it. We will need to use this black USB cable, so keep that handy. And we're definitely going to need these terminal cables right here. This one long cable that has multiple ports all connected to it. You're definitely going to need this. These cables here are the connectors for the buttons, those red and black buttons included in the kit. Since we don't need to use those buttons, you're not going to need to use this at all. You could toss that all to the side if you're going to put this in an Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet. Okay, let's get this bad boy installed. Step number one is we want to connect the two cables that come with the kit to this little mini USB adapter board that came with the kit. So the big flat USB cable goes on the right hand side into the smaller port and the longer cable that's got a whole bunch of other cables coming out of it goes into the fatter side on the opposite end. You'll notice right here you'll have two cables. Uh, they'll be marked P1, P2, and they're different size adapter plugs as well. You really can't mess this up. You're going to go ahead and plug these into the, uh, into the corresponding ports on the spinner, and now you're ready to actually plug this thing into your computer. Okay, time for step number two. We want to download the configuration software onto our PC or laptop in order to configure this spinner to be compatible with the Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet, because out of the box, it's compatible more with main cabinets. On the back of the card included with the spinner is a website address you need to go to. That website address will actually pull up a PDF document, which is your GRS Push and Pull Spinner version 2 user manual. Everything you need to know about this spinner, how to use it in multi-cades, as well as how to get this working in your Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet is going to be on here. What you want to do is scroll down to a hyperlink on there that says download here and click on that and download the configuration tool application to your PC. It should only take a couple of seconds to download. And after it downloads, it'll come over as a zip file, which you just right click on, use 7-zip or another extraction tool and just extract it here. You'll see the application launcher, and once you click on it, you are in the configuration tool for your spinner. You can recalibrate it, uh, just following the directions in red below on how to calibrate. You click on the start button, and you can you know push it in, pull it out, spin it at the same time, and calibrate it. Not really necessary. It should be calibrated out of the box. You could always do it if you want to. But really, the only, only thing you have to do here is where it says on the bottom right there, button output for push-pull, it's currently disabled. You got to switch that to enable, hit apply, it'll say success, and now the push-pull feature will work on the Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet. If you don't do this step, it's not going to work. Okay, on to step number four. We need to remove our existing push-pull spinner from our Arcade 1UP cabinet. You'll notice there's three cables an orange one, a brown one, and a multicolored one. 
coming out of the spinner plugged into the encoder board. You'll see that the brown cable is plugged into port A for push, and the orange cable is plugged into port B for pull. And then the multicolored cable is plugged in right there in order for doing all the left and right movements, etc. Arcade 1UP didn't use any glue this time, so it's pretty easy to unplug all three cables from the ports, and then we have to cut off the zip tie in order to completely get this out of our control panel. With the three cables removed from the zip tie, all we have to do is remove the four screws around the spinner itself, which I've already done. And once those four screws are removed, it'll come right out. They didn't glue this in either. Easy peasy to get this removed. Okay, step number five is going to be installing a 3D printed mount onto the control panel in order to mount and fit the new GRS spinner appropriately in the pre-drilled hole in the Arcade 1 Uptron control panel. This is something that you do need to source yourself. It does not come with the kit because the kit itself is meant more for multi-cades and DIY projects. So if you want to stick this in an Arcade 1UP cabinet, you do need to print this off yourself. If you have your own 3D printer, that's great. You go to Glenn's website underneath the product listing, you'll notice here, and we'll have a nice little arrow pop up. There's a download file. All you got to do is download that STI file print this off yourself on your own 3D printer, or if you don't have a 3D printer, don't panic. There's plenty of companies out there on the internet where all you do is go on their website, say, hey, I need to print this 3D file. You drop the file that you need printed, they print it, you pay for it, and they mail it to you. And then of course you just screw it into the existing uh, control panel. Um, I did have to pre-drill some holes in order to get it mounted in there, but as you can see, just make sure you get it mounted so it's nice and centered in the hole. And once that's done, you go ahead and get your spinner pushed through the hole in order to get this thing installed. Okay, now it's time we can go ahead and put our topper on. So using the little mini Allen wrench that came with the kit, we're just going to set our spinner on top of the post. And once it's on top of there, take our little Allen wrench, find the little keyhole on the side, and go ahead and get it lined up and twisted to the right, tightened to the right, until you feel it's tight and that's not going to turn anymore. That way you know it's not going to fall off. It's locked in. I guess one nice thing about printing this yourself is you can pick the color. Went with blue because it matches the blue highlights on the control panel. After you get that in, go ahead and give it some pushes, give it some uh, pulls. Make sure that it's pulling and pushing and it feels good. Give it some spins. And uh, if you don't see any issues like I don't, it's time to move on to the next step. Okay, let's get everything wired up. We are almost at the finish line. That way we can have some fun and play some games here. You guys remember this big cable contraption we put together, right? The USB adapter board plus all these cables, well it's time to pull this bad boy out and get everything plugged in. Here's your player 1 and player 2, uh, or the P1, P2 cables, you know where those goes. Those will be plugged into the spinner itself. And here's the other opposite end of the cable we haven't used yet. This is going to say push and pull on it. We need to plug these into those A and B ports on the encoder board. Remember, we re removed those orange and brown wires labeled A and B. I love that they uh, pre-labeled all the wires for you out of the box. So find the one that says push, plug that into A, find the one that says pull, and go ahead and plug that into B. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And on that same cable, you're going to find the ones that are labeled P1 and P2 and plug those back into the spinner, just like you did originally when you first uh, were hooking this up to your PC. When you're all done, it's going to look like this. We're going to end up dropping this long cable inside the cabinet when we remount the control panel, including that USB adapter and this black cable coming out of it. This cable is going to be plugged into the open USB port on the Tron Arcade 1UP cabinet, which I'll show you in one second. You'll notice on the top right of your PCB board next to the marquee light power uh, port is a vacant USB cable. We're going to go ahead and plug this in after we remount our control panel and get all of our other wires connected. Obviously, you had to disconnect some wires in order to get your control panel removed to work on it, reconnect everything, and then this cable that's dangling inside the cabinet, plug it into that port. That USB cable and port will give your spinner the ability to move left and right across the playfield. It's compatible with the Arcade 1UP PCB. And then, of course, the push-pull functions are controlled by those AB cables that we plugged into the encoder board itself. Make sure everything looks good before you get your control deck screwed in and give it a test. Go ahead and fire up your Arcade 1UP Tron cabinet. Make sure you plugged in all your wires correctly. Make sure everything works, your spinner, your push-pull as well as make sure all the lights come back on on your cabinet, that you have it all wired correctly. 
after I got everything installed and got a chance to test it out and see how it worked with all the games, I did notice that it does feel a bit more sensitive than the stock spinner that comes with the Arcade 1-Up. The Arcade 1-Up seems really dialed in for the gameplay. This one is a little bit more free-moving. So there is going to be some period of adjustment here as you're trying to say, okay, how, how hard should I spin? How hard should I move it in order to get things to work? So there was a bit of a period of adjustment there uh, after this was installed and testing it with the games where I was able to, you know, finally figure it out and be like, okay, this is how sensitive it is versus the stock arcade one up spinner and we can make it work and, you know, succeed at this game. If you're interested in this product, I'll have a link below for the Thunderstick Studio website where you can get everything you need to purchase it and all the download files, etc. Uh, this product retails for $64.99. I did pay for this product out of my own pocket. Uh, it's on sale currently on Glenn's website for $54.99, so always look out for deals, etc. Um, and of course, keep in mind too, you're going to have to pay somebody if you don't have a 3D printer to print that little mount for you, but it shouldn't cost too much because it's such a small thing. Um, overall, I think this is a really cool product. It's definitely arcade quality. Uh, one thing to note, though, it is a bit more sensitive than the stock spinner. So there will be a period of adjustment. But uh, once you adapt to it, at least in my opinion, once I adapted to it, it was fine. I would recommend this product if you're looking for this kind of upgrade. But it's not 100% necessary because the arcade one up spinner is pretty decent. So this is going to be totally up to you if you want to do this mod. Any questions, feedback, comments, reactions, make sure you guys leave those below. If you enjoyed the review and installation tutorial, do me a favor, guys. Give me a thumbs up on the way out. And as always, my dudes, thank you for subscribing.